Hey folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. What we're going to talk about today is how food affects your hormones. Now this is a big topic because the reason we're alive, the reason we are who we are is because of our hormones. Now hormones are chemicals and we only need a little bit of them to make a major change in our lives. And when we talk about hormones, a lot of times you think, well, there's testosterone, it's a sex drive hormone, and there's estrogen, which is the, the feminizing hormone. But these do a lot more than that. Like testosterone, for example, yes, is, is your libido hormone, but your testosterone also helps build muscle. And not just your biceps and your triceps, how about your heart? How about your colon? How about your blood vessels? These are all muscles. And so if we start having testosterone issues, it can cause serious problems. Estrogen, considered more like the female hormone, uh, is growth hormone. And if you are fat, and I used to be fat, so I can say the F word on radio, I used to be fat, and if you're fat, you're pre fat we used to think was just a blob. Now it turns out fat is a living, breathing organ, and it produces its own hormones. It produces estrogen. So estrogen causes you to lay down fat, which produces estrogen, which causes you to lay down fat, and this is why sometimes it's hard to lose weight. Because when you're fat, you're producing estrogen, which is causing you to become more fat. So we used to think calories in, calories out, and that's how you determined your weight, but that's not true. There's a lot of other factors, and especially in modern times, we have a lot of chemicals called endocrine disruptors. These are chemicals that can act like hormones and really mess with you. Some, some of the endocrine disruptors can be two, three, four hundred, six hundred times stronger than human hormones like estrogen disruptors. Pretty wild stuff. So hormones are pretty important, and your body produces hormones. Or you can get them from an outside source, which you shouldn't. That's why you know people talk about hormone replacement therapy. Sometimes it's necessary, but many times if you can get your organs working properly, you don't have to worry about that. So let's talk about the food, well, food romance, food hormone connection. And let's see how that works. Now, if you're just joining us, I am Dr. Joe Esposito. I'm board certified in chiropractic, board certified in orthopedics. I'm double board certified in nutrition, a BS in nutrition, retired dietitian, award-winning author, uh, obviously a nationally syndicated radio show host. And I've been in practice well over 30 years. So these credentials allow me to give you this information because this is healthcare that really, really works. And so it's kind of a neat thing. Uh, that we can give you this information. So let's talk about how food might affect your hormones. And, and, and we can put it in a romantic setting because, of course, that sells all the time. But let's assume that you and I are going to go out for a romantic dinner or you and your whoever, in case you're not interested in me. Uh, you want to go out with somebody who you have an interest in, and you're going to go out for a romantic dinner. Now, the traditional dinner would usually include things like, uh, you know, picture, picture it in your mind in, in a movie. you got steak, lobster, baked potato maybe, uh, coffee, wine. You have to have wine. Of course, wine is romantic. And what happens to your hormones if you eat that food? And let's break it down item by item. So let's assume we have a piece of steak. Now, I don't eat meat. I've been a vegan for over 30 years. I'm not asking you to be a vegan. I'm asking you to make better choices. It was funny. Before I came on the air, I ran into one of my, uh, one of my colleagues, very internationally famous. I mean, actually one of the best in the world. And uh, I talk about the seven deadly sins of nutrition, and I call them alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, the seven deadly sins. And so Scott stops me in the hall. He goes, hey, 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 Joe, come on. He says, work with me. Do I have to give up all seven? Can't I give up like two or three, maybe hang on to a few more? I said, yes, Scott, you can do that, but always work toward getting rid of all the seven deadly sins because that's going to help you reach your ultimate uh, goal in health. So meat being one of them, and if you're going to eat steak, steak takes a lot of energy to digest. In fact, meat takes a lot of energy to digest. So the number one consumer of energy we have as humans is romance. The number two consumer of energy we have as humans is digestion. Now, most of us are digesting all day, every day. We may not be having romance all day, every day, but we're digesting all day, every day. So that becomes something you want to consider. Wow, where do I want to spend my energy? I've only got X amount of energy. What am I going to do with it? So I'd like to save mine, not for digestion, for other things. And so if you're going to eat a lot of animal products, you're burning through a lot of fuel. Now, meat also is hard to digest, and when it gets into your gut, it can putrefy, or essentially rot, 
uh, carbohydrates ferment and proteins putrefy. And if it rots in your colon, it can start to produce gas. Now, I don't know about you in a romantic situation. Personally, I don't think that's something that's fun to be part of a romantic situation. So if the meat is starting to rot in your colon, that's not a good thing. So using up a lot of energy, getting a lot of gas, and not just the obvious reasons you don't want gas, but it can create a lot of bloating because the gas fills up and blows up in your gut. Now, a lot of commercial meat is loaded with things like steroids, chemicals, hormones, antibiotics, pesticides, herbicides, tranquilizers, and now we have things called genetically modified foods. And I have to laugh because I see it. It's amazing, just in our short lifetime that we're on this earth, how many changes have been made. There's a chemical called glyphosate. Glyphosate is weed killer. You probably have some in your garage right now. And glyphosate is used on genetically modified foods. Let me explain that to you. What happens is we can genetically modify food and alter it so that we can spray this glyphosate, this weed killer, onto the plants, and it kills the weeds but doesn't kill the corn or the soy or whatever we genetically modified. Corn and soy are the two most popular ones. Well, Mother Nature has laughed at us and said, ha-ha, you think you can spray weed killer and you're going to kill all the weeds. I'm going to mutate the weeds so that they become immune to glyphosate this weed killer, or glyphosate, however you want to say it. And so now it's not working. It worked for a while. In for a couple of years it worked. But now suddenly the weeds are not responding to this weed killer. And so now we have to come up with stronger weed killers. So the reason we genetically modify the foods is so that we can spray the weed killer on it and not have to worry about weeds. And it makes it supposedly hardier to grow. Well, the problem with that is you're, you're altering the DNA of the plant, the corn, the soy, whatever it is. And now suddenly when you, the human, eat it, you're putting a protein or DNA, altered DNA into your body that you, have, you, we, as humans, have never seen since the beginning of time. And our immune system doesn't know what to do with it. So our immune system just goes bonkers and starts attacking these foreign proteins and causes some real serious problems. And some of the side effects are even as far as sterility inability to reproduce. So it's altering our hormones. So if you're going to eat corn and soy, I recommend you do organic only or don't eat it. But if you're going to eat commercial meat, guess what you're eating? What that cow ate, what that chicken ate, which is what? Genetically modified corn and soy and other things. So now we have this, this storehouse of these genetically modified chemicals, genetically modified DNA, in this meat, in this chicken, whatever it is, this egg, this milk, and you're eating it. And now your immune system doesn't recognize this protein. It starts attacking itself. And over time, we start to see some real serious problems. Now, I've been in practice, like I said, about 30-some-odd years. And when I first got in practice, we didn't see a lot of issues like uh, erectile dysfunction. We didn't see a lot of people not being able to make babies. Every now and then it would come in and we'd see it. Now, it's just an everyday event. And for, you know, romantic function, it's not just old people anymore. Remember when old was 30 and then 40 and then 50 and then 60? <laughs> We're seeing it in young people. We're seeing women and men coming in who just can't function in a romantic capacity, uh, physically or sometimes emotionally, but physically is what we're talking about here. And we don't know why. And so what do we do? We give them pills to try to overcome that. If you ever watch a sporting event, you'll notice every third commercial is for a little blue pill. Apparently, every man in the world has issues when it comes to the romantic department because there's so many commercials for it. But I believe, my opinion, is that what's happening is we're altering the DNA in our food, which is causing our immune system to go wacky, and it's affecting our reproductive capabilities, along with other things, too. But there's farmers, a lot of reports of farmers that had to take their animals off genetically modified food because they couldn't make little cow babies and pig babies. And so they had to make pig babies to make more pigs, to make more money. And so they couldn't figure out what it was. They took them off genetically modified corn and soy, and suddenly they started making babies again. Now, we don't know how long-term this damage is going to be, so that's where the problems come in. So if you're going to eat meat, and I don't, but if you're going to eat meat, I recommend you do organic only or don't eat it. I choose not to eat it because I don't want to take that risk. And again, just the genetically modified part is one of the many, many reasons I don't think meat should be something should be part of your diet. I'm also a realist, 
and I realize that you're probably not going to listen to everything I say, and you think it might be a little wacky to give up animal products. So I'll, I'll, negoti- I'll negotiate every one of the seven deadly sins with you. How about that? And when it comes to animal products, I recommend organic only or don't eat it. And, of course, not eating it is going to be your best choice. Saturated fats in the animal products can clump your red blood cells together. And red blood cells clump together, they can't carry oxygen. Oxygen, muy importante. Makes your body work, makes your brain work, makes you, I don't know, alive. And so it's important that you understand when you're eating animal products, it's exhausting because it takes up so much energy to digest, and the saturated fat is going to clump your red blood cells together. You can't carry oxygen. So therein lies a big problem. Now, if you're, when you cook the meats, it becomes another issue. Off the, well, kind of along the hormone th- line that we're talking about today. If you grill the meat, those grill marks create something called heterocyclic amines. Heterocyclic amines are carcinogenic. So when you get those little grill marks on your meat, they taste good. I remember. It's been a long time, but I remember. But that causes a problem. The smell, the smoke. You know that smell of roasted animal? Tastes, smelled good, doesn't it? Those are polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. And polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are known carcinogens. So, thousand and one reasons why you may not want to eat meat. When the meat sits in your gut for too long, and many people have digestive problems, we'll try to cover that today too, you might have things like acid reflux, burping, gas, bloating, and that means the food isn't being digested fast enough. And if it sits in your gut, it rots. And we all know somebody who has that breath that smells like potty breath. There's two types of bad breath. Well, three types, I guess, if you just ate garlic. I'm Italian, so I know about that. See, I just thought about that. I thought about my grandmother, Grandma Esposito. I just remember we'd always go to her, and we'd, we always have to kiss the grandma and the grandpa, you know. And I remember being a little kid and kissing her, and, boy, the garlic was just everywhere. And so, it, to me, that's a nice smell. But I digress. If you have that potty mouth, smells like, you know, dirty toilet or sewer, that usually is from the digestive system. And you can brush and scrub and rinse and floss all you want. The problem's coming from your gut. These horrible gases are rotting in the gut. They get absorbed into the blood system. They go into the lungs where oxygen is exchanged. And then the stink, the gases, are now exchanged through the the, the red blood cells, goes into the lungs, and it comes out of your mouth. And that's where the potty breath comes from. If it smells rotten, it's usually like a rotten tooth or you just didn't brush your teeth. So there's two different smells when it comes to bad breath, really, that are medical issues. So if you have somebody with that potty breath, it means their, their gut is rotten. And you really need to get that moving. Now, there's a couple of things you can do. Number one, if the stomach pushes up against the diaphragm, you might have things like acid reflux, burping, gas, bloating. And we need to manually, in many cases, massage or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. And when we do that, then you start digesting your food properly and the bowels start moving two to three times a day, which is normal. Yes, that's normal. And we fix the issue. Now, if the bowels aren't moving two to three times a day, even after we fix the nervous system and we fix the stomach, then we may have to take a supplement to try to move the bowels along. And I have a supplement that I created years ago for a patient with severe constipation, 16-year-old girl, really saved her life, I think. It's called Dr. Joe's Intestinal Cleanser. And this stuff is great. It's relatively inexpensive. And I, if you just, I'd say take one one day and the bowel should move two to three times a day the next day. If it's not happening, take two the next day. If not, take three the next day. Don't take more than three. I had a patient take six one time. Six. And she said, she came in, she did on a Friday, and she came in on a Monday and said, you weren't kidding, that stuff really works. She goes, I couldn't leave the house all weekend. It's kind of like almost mad at me. I said, I told you not to do it. Don't blame me just because you did it, you silly girl. So, but we haven't, it's called Dr. Joe's Intestinal Cleanser. And that's on my website, drjoesposito.com. And, you know, speaking of oxygen, uh, you can get oxygen from iron, but too much iron can cause problems. Too much iron can oxidize in your blood, essentially rust in your blood, and that can lead to heart attack or heart disease. And that's why I tell, you know, men and women who are menopausal to donate blood periodically. Because when you donate blood, you're actually bloodletting. I know ancient ancient technique there, but it's I think it's a good idea. Let if you have too much iron, it's a good way to get iron out of your system. Because I once it gets in, it's pretty hard to get out. So it's a, it's a good way to flush it out. Just donate blood. I donate blood as often as I can because I just feel good when I do it. And my body starts making fresh blood. So back to the rotting meat. Um, not a good idea to put that in your body. 
So we are, let me talk more about the digestive system as I'm running around in, in, in tangents here. The brain sends messages down your spine, out your nerves to every cell in the body. So there's a nerve that goes to your digestive system, your liver, your spleen, your prostate, your colon, your ovaries, your earwax. Everything is controlled by nerves. And chemically, we can alter a nerve. And physically, if a bone moves out of place, if a muscle spasms, if a disc swells, you can pinch a nerve. And if you pinch a nerve, it hurts. So step number one, I always want to check nerves to see if there's any pain. 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. So you can have a pinched nerve and not know it. So as a chiropractor, when patients come in our offices, I want to look at the nervous system, I want to look at their digestive system, and I want to look at their diet. And I start everybody, most people, I should say, a few, few exceptions, on something called Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. If you haven't taken this yet, folks, they're two powders. I have it sitting here in the studio with me right now. I mix it with coconut milk because I like coconut milk. Shake it up and drink it at least once a day. I have some patients that are really in desperate need. I'll have them on two or three times a day. And that's the minimum amount of nutrients your body needs. So if you're not willing to do anything else when it comes to your health care, at least give your body the minimum amount of nutrients that it needs. And that's Super Greens, an essential source. And all those are on my website, drjoesposito.com. Or you can just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world. Now, if you'd like to come see us as a patient, if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, if you've ever been in a car accident, I say this and people always call my office. If the car was damaged, you were damaged 100% of the time. I've never seen a car damaged ever in 32 years of practice where the occupants weren't damaged. So if you want to make an appointment to come see us, we accept most major medical insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. We would love the opportunity to have you come see us. My website, you can make an appointment on the website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world. And you can set an appointment online, call us, make, you know, get their imp information. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. And when you call, we have certain guidelines we like people to follow. So give us a call. We'll get that set up for you. drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Make your appointment today. Don't be like most patients who say, I wish I'd done this sooner. Sooner is right now. Let's do it, drjoesposito.com. So we're talking today about how food affects your hormones and why that's a big issue. Because one of the things we do with, we're back on animal products again. Gosh, I guess we could do a half a show on animal products. Um, when you do animal products, many times the animal products are fed estrogen or estrogen-like compounds to make them get big and fat because we sell animals by the pound. And so the bigger and fatter they are, the more money we, not we, but farmers can make. So if you go uh, and you're going to eat commercial meat, you're probably eating these artificial growth hormones that are given to a lot of animals. Now, chickens, they can't give hormones to. It's illegal, or poultry, I should say. But they can give them antibiotics. And the antibiotics act like growth hormones. So you're trying to lose weight, and you're eating growth hormones that make you gain weight, because that's what we gave to the animals. Counterproductive, isn't it? So once again, with animal products, either organic or don't eat them. Now, when it comes to food, we have to look at things like wine because wine is like such a big part of our, our society. And we'll cover alcohol in general. I won't pick on wine. I'll pick on all, al all alcohol, including wine. Alcohol lowers your testosterone levels. Now, if it comes to hormones, I want my testosterone levels higher as I'm getting older, not lower. So you're drinking alcohol, lowering your testosterone levels, and that's a big issue. Because testosterone not only is your sex drive hormone, it builds muscle mass. Your heart, your biceps, your triceps, your colon, romantic organs. You need to have that testosterone. And as the testosterone levels drop, you have a big problem. My father, uh, they uh, unfortunately, they diagnosed him with might have been, possibly could have been something wrong with his prostate. So they put him on a, a drug that was going to shut down his prostate and shut down his production of testosterone. Well, as soon as he took it, my father had a, a nice build on him. He, was, he had a gut as he got older in life, but he had good muscles on him. And he had a hairy chest. He was an Italian. And suddenly the muscles started to get weaker and flabby, and the chest hair started to fall out. And I remember thinking, he just doesn't look as manly as he used to. My father used to like, look like Ricky Ricardo from I Love Lucy, if you're old enough. Very handsome man. And they gave him this shot, and about five months later, he dropped dead. Fell off the couch, dead. One of the side effects, one of the warnings, and people you should never use this drug for was people with a heart condition. My father had had a mitral valve replaced in his heart. He had a weak heart. So damn those doctors. They gave him the drug that they should have never given to somebody who has a weak heart, 
And I believe, because one of the side effects of it is death, the heart stops, his heart stopped because it shut down his testosterone production, which he needed to make his heart beat. This is why I'm not against medicine. I'm against unnecessary use of medicine. Famous guy once said, forgive them for they know not what they do. And it's really hard to talk to your family about things. Anybody have that problem aside from me? Yeah. I tried. Didn't work. And so unfortunately, we don't want to shut down your testosterone production. Now, here's something is designed to do it, this drug. However, you could be doing it every single day if you're doing things like alcohol. We don't want that. We want more testosterone, not less. And exogenous or outside sources of testosterone could be dangerous too because outside hormones are never exactly the same as yours, the ones you make. And so I, if you have to do external hormones, I understand it. Sometimes it's thyroid issues. Sometimes it's pancreatic issues. And I get it. I'm good with that. But let's try to fix it naturally if we can. Because if I can get your testicles, men, and your adrenal glands working, and women, your adrenal glands and your ovaries working, we can start producing those sex hormones internally, not externally, in some cases, not in most cases, not all, but some. In fact, just before I came on the air, there was somebody here at the studio, an outsider, and uh, she recognized who I was, and she started chatting with me, and she said that she has a thyroid problem. Could I help her with it? And I said, I don't know, but I'd love to talk about it more, but i got to get into the studio right now. So she gave me her card. I'll give her a call. But she has hypothyroidism, and a lot of people have hypothyroidism, and that's a whole other lecture. I'm, if I haven't done one recently, I'll probably do one on thyroid again or just, just a whole endocrine system. But you've got to be careful with that. You've got to get enough iodine. You've got to stop using things like chlorine and fluorine and bromine because they block up your iodine receptor sites in your thyroid. Your thyroid can't work. And where do we get chlorine, fluorine, and bromine? Everywhere. Water, toothpaste, bread. It's found everywhere. So unfortunately, we're living in a real weird society right now. So many chemicals that were designed to make our lives better are now turning out to make our lives worse and many times shorter. So it's a big issue. So I'm going to have to ask, go to a break real soon. Uh, when we come back, or next time we, get, we talk, which is going to be real soon, we're going to talk about coffee. We're going to talk about the cheesecake dessert. We're going to talk about things you can do to up your hormone levels or normalize your hormone levels, I should say. And if we have time, we'll talk a little bit about uh, certain things you can do to increase your romantic life as well. So if you're just tuning in, I am Dr. Joe Esposito. My website, drjoeesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world. And we would love to have you come in as patients. If you'd like to come see us as patients, you, you, your family, your friends, if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, headaches, numbness, tingling, muscle weakness, digestive problems, acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, it's <laughs> a lot of stuff. We get pretty good results with almost all of those. Well, all of those we just listed and a lot more. So if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you ready? you're at that point in your life finally where you say, you know what? I don't want this neck pain anymore. I don't want this headache. I hate this acid reflux. I hate this irritable bowel syndrome. Whatever it is, we'd love to have the opportunity to talk to you. Go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. We'll set you up a time to come in. Uh, we'll do an exam if we need to. We'll find out what's going on, and then I'll put together a treatment plan for you. And the treatment plan is I want you to follow it. The average treatment plan in my office is about 60 days. And I tell my patients, if you're serious about wanting to get well, I want to own your health care for 60 days. I want to get your nervous system working. As a chiropractor, we want to unpinch your nerves, relieve your pain, but also get the nervous system working that controls the organs. We want to get your digestive system working so you don't have the acid reflux and the burping and the gas. And we want to get your diet straightened out. So the absolute minimum, if you're not willing to do anything else, and I think you should do all of it, the absolute minimum is start with Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Those are on the website, drjoesposito.com. And you can order them. You can pick them up at our offices. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Uh, we can ship them to you. I know this, this show goes all over the world. So, um, But if you're in the Atlanta area, you can pick them up. And once people start that, it, it's really it's like it's kind of like their gateway, I hate to say drug, it's their gateway food to start getting well. And they say, oh, yeah, I feel pretty good when I take this stuff. I'm going to take the next step and the next step. But you really, you got to get the nervous system working. That's the key. So neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, arthritis, scoliosis, these are all telling us something is structurally wrong and it needs to be structurally corrected. There's not a pill in the world that's going to help straighten out a spine. 
There's not a pill in the world that's going to get the nervous system working if it's a physical problem. So again, my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. You can make an appointment, order supplements. If you have questions, send them to me through the website as well. Hey, got to go, gotta go to a break. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Hey folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Today, we're talking about food and hormones and how your food affects your hormones and vice versa, I guess. Uh, Actually, it does because hormones make you hungry. So we talked uh, a little bit about meat and animal products and how hard they are to digest. And if you're trying to digest animal products, uh, especially meat, it's, it's the number two consumer of energy we have as humans. And the primary consumer of energy is romance. So there's gonna mess with your hormones. We talked about how alcohol lowers your testosterone levels, and we don't want to lower our testosterone levels in most cases. We need to raise it, not lower it. I don't know anyone actually has too high testosterone. I know a lot of people have low testosterone, so that becomes a a big issue as well. So let's talk some more about how food affects your hormones. So let's assume we're going to have a romantic dinner, and we have steak, uh, lobster. Let's briefly touch on lobster. I have to pick on lobster a little bit. Now, lobster is a crustacean. And it lives on the bottom of the ocean, and it's a bottom feeder. And if you ever read, there was a book written a while ago, I don't know, a couple of chapters there, uh, and it was in Leviticus. And in Leviticus, being facetious here, we're talking about the Bible, of course, the Old Testament. And in Leviticus, when Moses wrote Leviticus, he he gave guidelines. Leviticus is kind of like a section of the Bible that talks about uh, good guidelines on how to live your life. It really wasn't so dramatically uh, religious as some of the other sections. It was more, this is a good handbook for being human. And some of the things Moses said, he talked about if you're going to eat animals, it's got to be cloven hooved and cud chewing, which means it has to be vegetarian animals. And don't eat pig and don't eat snake and don't eat rat because they're not vegetarians. And he also talked about if you don't eat shellfish, which is why two of the three major religions, uh, Judaism and uh, Muslims, are not allowed to eat shellfish because they're dirty animals. They're unclean and they live on the bottom and they're filters. They filter out junk. And one of the big issues we have in current day is a lot of mercury and heavy metals that settle to the bottom of the ocean and these animals collect it in their bodies and then you eat their bodies. So oysters, clams, mussels. And I used to love this stuff. I'm Italian. I used to love this stuff. But lobsters many times are loaded with heavy metals and mercury. And when mercury and heavy metals get into the body, they can essentially short circuit the nervous system, keeping it really simple for you. And that's where you start to have a problem is putting those heavy metals into your body. And uh, in our office, we do something called a hair analysis. We can actually analyze your hair uh, to determine if you have excess amounts of heavy metals in your body, and then we can give you some recommendations. And one of the things you can do that is very good for detoxifying heavy metals is a near-infrared sauna. So an infrared sauna, when you get in there, uh, helps dislodge, for lack of a better word, uh, these heavy metals from your cells and get them to come out through your sweat. So that's why with people with heavy metal toxicity, many times I'll recommend that. But also you have to have the right food. Your bowels have to be working properly two to three times a day. So when any of these toxins are trying to be released, they don't get reabsorbed back into your body. So it's really important. Another reason why you have to have a good diet. But lobster, I have to joke because I'll get you grossed out on this one. Lobster, you ever flip a lobster over and kind of look at their little claws and little, little legs moving around like that? What other animals do they look like? Cockroach. The lobster is the cousin to the cockroach. Ew. That's a big ew factor. I don't want to eat roach on a half shell. Blech. So, sea, co- sea cockroaches. That's what we'll call them, sea cockroaches. And so there's many reasons why you don't want to eat lobster aside from the gross factor. And it's really hard to digest. It's loaded with bad cholesterol. So there's a lot of different reasons not to eat it. And when it comes to the food romance connection or the food hormone connection, we got to make sure we have the right things going in our body at all times. Now, we can put the right food in the body, but you also have, the prop, you have to have the proper nerve supply. So one of the things that happens uh, with a lot of patients I've seen, countless at this point, um, you might have a pinched nerve in your low back. Well, that might cause back pain, leg pain, hip pain, knee pain. That same nerve controls your colon, sex organs, and bladder. So by having a pinched nerve in the low back, you might have things like gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, urinary problems, sexual problems, all coming from the low back. 
So we don't want to have pinched nerves in the low back because of the adverse effect on the pain it can cause, but also it can affect your sex function. And it, contr it controls the testicles and the ovaries, which now can affect your hormones. And we've had a lot of patients over the years under chiropractic care with us, and they go and get their blood work test, and I said, Doc, my cholesterol is normal, my testosterone is normal, my, my hormones are balanced. Because you have to have the proper nerve supply to an organ, and you have to have the proper nutrients for the organs to work. So that's another reason why it's important to have the triad I, I talk about of healthcare: normally functioning nervous system, normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. So I'm going to pick on a little baked potato here. What could be wrong with a baked potato? Well, actually, baked potatoes aren't that bad. I'm going to give give you a little, I'm going to slide you some uh, some some relief here. If you're going to eat anything that grows below the ground, I'm going to recommend organic only. So that would be carrots, potatoes, onions. Because what we do is we, farmers, spray these toxic chemicals and pesticides onto the soil on a regular basis, and it sinks, seeps down into the soil. And over time, these plants are going to absorb this from the soil. So you want to have organic if you're going to be eating something that grows underground. Everything should be organic if possible, but especially things that grow underground. And with the potato, it's a good idea to eat the skin. You certainly don't want to eat the skin if it's not organic. So... A little bit of potato, organic, probably not too bad. Has complex carbohydrates in it, which becomes which helps build serotonin. Serotonin is the neurotransmitter in your brain that helps you focus. So that's kind of nice. Now, if you start adding butter and sour cream to it, now we start having a problem. But I'm going to give you options. I told you I'll negotiate everything with you. So if you're going to put butter on there, butter is loaded. It's, if it's not organic butter, steroids, hormones, chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, genetically modified foods, and that's not what you want to put in your body. So if you're going to do animal products like butter or sour cream, once again, what's the rules? Organic only or don't eat them. Exactly right. So we want to keep those levels of the hormones up. The fiber that's found in a potato in the skin is very good because what happens is you eat food, even if you're eating good food, you're going to have waste products. It's going to process through your liver. Your liver is going to dump it into your gallbladder. Gallbladder is going to dump it into your small intestine, and out it goes. If your bowels aren't moving properly, these toxins can lay in your bowels for too long and get reabsorbed. So that's another reason why you want to eat a really high plant-based diet. I eat a total plant-based diet. I haven't had animal products in over 30 years. And even if I do something horrible, I know you're going to laugh at this, right? I went out to a show the other night, and it was a, like dinner and, and drinks. Of course, I don't drink. And I said, what can I have off the menu? And uh, we had a $50 gift card. So I had to spend my $50 gift card. And they had one thing. It was a hummus, uh, baba ganoush, and olive tray type thing with some bread. I thought, well, I'm pretty hungry right now, so I'm going to eat this. I'm going to eat well, probably what amounted to maybe a piece of pita bread. And even after that, I just felt a little fat, a little sluggish. And I was talking to Alan, one of my uh, pro producers and board operators here at the station, and he was saying that since he's changed his diet, he says he only eats meat like once a week. He says that every time I do, I feel like, We'll say bad. How about that? He feels bad. And he says, I said, why do you keep eating? He goes, I don't know. He says, I still like the flavor. He says, but you know what? Since I've given up the meat, I really don't miss it anymore. It's more habit than anything else. I said, so when you don't eat it, he goes, no, when I eat all plants, I feel great. I said, so when you eat all plants, you feel great. When you don't eat all plants, you don't feel great. Where's the logic? He goes, don't start with me, doc. He says, I know you're right. I'm not arguing that you're right. I got to argue with the fact I got to do it. And even something like a piece of bread very low fiber, and that can really slow down bowel function. So once you, and I got to warn you on this, once you start cleaning up your diet, it's going to be real hard to go back. And you're going to try. I know you. You're going to go back. And you're going to feel awful. You say, why am I going back? I feel awful when I do this. And then I'm going to hit you with the, why didn't you do this sooner? And you're going to say, I don't know, Dr. Joe, because what you say makes sense. So fiber is going to be real important. And uh, so potato, not bad. If it's organic, you can use organic butter. Uh, there's other brands. There's several brands now of plant-based butter spreads or buttery spreads. Make sure it doesn't have hydrogenated oils. I know they're supposed to be out of the market, I think, by 2018. Um, but just check if it has hydrogenated oil. You don't want to eat it. But there's a lot of You can put butter on it. You can put uh, sautéed onions if you want to, sautéed peppers. Salsa works well on baked potatoes. So there's lots of things you can do. Now, you also want to start to exercise because exercise helps build up your testosterone levels. Now, 
I don't like going to the gym. I don't like spending hours lifting weights. So what I try to do is just keep my body in motion. And the good part is as long as you're keeping your body in motion, your body's going to function pretty well. So what does that mean? So you want to do about 20 minutes of aggressive exercise every day. And when I say aggressive, it could be a fast walk. You don't have to hit the heavy bag. So when I do my radio shows, for example, I'm standing up. I used to sit down, and I found out when I stand up, I breathe better. It opens up my lungs, but it also keeps me moving. And so every time I, I'm, I'm doing a show and I'm walking, essentially I'm rocking back and forth, i got to do about 10,000 steps a day, and that's going to equal about 20 minutes of aerobic workout. So one of the cool things about my job is, aside from being a chiropractor, which I walk all day there, is I can stand up and do my show. So if you have an opportunity to stand up and do something, do it. You could do housework. If you could work at a stand-up desk, yeah, is, is it, it going to change your life dramatically? It'll help. Every little bit helps, which is cool. And the older we get, the less active we become, of course. But that's going to help increase your testosterone levels. or no, I shouldn't say increase, normalize your testosterone level. So we're talking about food and hormones today. And let's get into coffee because we got to talk about coffee. Then i got to talk about digestion. i got, I got too much to cover. I'm going to need like another four or five hours, I think, just, just on this one topic. Coffee increases your homocysteine. Homocysteine oxidizes low-density lipoproteins and makes them stick to the artery walls. How's that for a bunch of mumbo-jumbo? Homocysteine is a chemical that will make cholesterol stick to your artery walls, bottom line. So when you get your blood work done, you could check your cholesterol, your total cholesterol, your cholesterol ratios, blah, 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 blah. That's all well and good, but that's really not going to be a good indicator of your risk of heart disease. You want to find out how much cholesterol is stuck to the artery walls. And when it, if there's an inflammatory reaction, it causes it to stick to the artery walls. So when you get your blood work done, check your homocysteine along with all your other tests. And I think you'll be amazed. That's a much better indicator of your um, heart disease risk. So coffee increases homocysteine. And it, it can as, as the homocysteine increases, it oxidizes the low-density lipoproteins, what's called the bad cholesterol, makes it stick to the artery walls, and now you have bad circulation because you're clogging up your arteries. And when it comes to romance, kind of tied into this lecture here today, or talk, I shouldn't say lecture, talk, I guess, or show, you need good blood supply, men and women, not just men, women need it too. So if you don't have good blood supply to your erogenous zones, you're not going to be able to experience all the pleasures that you should be experiencing. And I'll tell you what, men come to my offices all the time and say, Doc, I just can't function like I used to. And inevitably, we find a pinched nerve and or clogged arteries. So we got to straighten out their diet, unpinch the nerves, and then everything starts to work normally in most cases again, uh, which is kind of nice. Coffee's an acid. When you put acid in your body, your body needs to uh, neutralize those acids. And your body neutralizes those acids with calcium. So your body is giving up calcium, usually stored in the blood and then in the bones, to neutralize the acids. And so that could lead to malfunctioning muscles, malfunctioning nervous system, and weak bones. So we don't want that either. So you got to be careful with that. So ask, coffee's an acid. And the big acids are the seven deadly sins. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Coffee's also a diuretic. Diuretic means what? It makes you pee. It's also bowel stimulant. Some people say, I can't have my morning constitution unless I have my coffee. Well, it's really not. The, well, the coffee is an acid, and the acid is irritating your bowels, causing them to release. But coffee is also warm. So you might want to just switching, switch to something else warm, like a tea, preferably caffeine-free tea, like an herbal tea. And you'll be amazed. Like I do a lot of uh, what's called slippery elm tea. And the reason is I talk a lot. And slippery elm is very soothing to the mucous membranes. So that's something you might want to consider as well as getting a tea that might be beneficial to what you need. There's calming teas. There's stimulating teas. There's uh, romance stimulating teas. There's things that coat your throat. There's teas that stimulate your bowels. There's teas that will help your adrenal glands like rhodiola and ginseng and ginger. So decide what you want and go that way. And many times just that warmth is going to stimulate the bowels. Now, again, as a chiropractor... I want to make sure your nervous system is working. I want to make sure your digestive system is working. And I want to make sure you're eating the right foods. So if you're going to be eating these bad foods, I've said it a thousand times, I'll say it again, you've got to give your body at least the minimum amount of nutrients it needs to function. 
And so I created something called Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Really the minimum, minimum requirement you need for a day. This is in addition to a good diet, but at least it's a starting point for thousands and thousands and thousands of people because they, they may not be ready to make the big changes. They may not be ready to make uh, lifestyle issues, uh, addressing lifestyle issues. So you can get those on my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. And the Super Greens, the essential source, I, I couldn't live without them, I don't think. I have them sitting right here in, my, in the studio in front of me. And it's two powders. I mix them with coconut milk, almond milk, whatever. I use what's ever on sale. Again, I don't drink cow's milk. And I just shake it up and drink it. And I tell you what, it keeps your brain working. It keeps your body working. Uh, it, I have a condition called macular degeneration. And five years ago, doctor told me, essentially, you're going to stay the same or get worse and maybe go blind, and that's it. And so I started taking the Super Greens, the essential source, real religiously. And mine, in just a few, few short years, was about five, six years now, I guess, uh, we're about 80% improved. And my eye doctor said, that's impossible. You can't improve macular degeneration. I said, ha-ha, look at your pictures and tell me differently. And he said, pictures don't lie. And then he had a new doctor in last year when I went to get my checkup. And she looked at it in amazement, too, and says, your eyes are getting better. That's, that's impossible. I said, no, it's not. Giving the body the right nutrition, getting it the nervous system working properly, getting the digestive system working properly, you start to see some pretty cool things. And you can get the Super Greens, the Essential Source. My books, oh, my books, I didn't plug my book yet. New book out recently called uh, Prescription for Extreme Health. Absolutely, positively, a wonderful guide that everyone should read. Here at the studio, I gave out copies, and people are just a buzz. They just love it. The, the feedback has just been w overwhelming. That's on my website as well. I have another book called uh, Eating Right for the Health of It. tells you how to change your diet. Uh, we have other supplements. Uh, it's a great website, drjoesposito.com. We also archive my radio shows there. Those are all free. And I have videos of my lectures. You can watch videos for free. Go to my website, and you can watch uh, me giving live lectures, drjoesposito.com. Now, if you want to make an appointment to come see us, maybe you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, I would love to be your doctor. If you want to make an appointment, you better show up, and you better be ready to get well. Those are my rules because I don't want you wasting your time or my time. So if you're serious about wanting to get well, you're sick and tired of your neck pain and your back pain, and your shoulder pain, and your digestive problems, and whatever the issue is that maybe many doctors will send their patients to us and say, Joe, we're confused on this one. You figure it out and let us know what it is. Go to my website, book an appointment, drjoesposito.com, all one word, or just Google Dr. Joe. We accept most major medical insurances, car accidents, sports injuries, uh, workers' comp injuries, Medicare. I know last doctors in the world take Medicare, I think. And we would love the opportunity to work with you because you're suffering needlessly. The average lifespan is about 26,960 days. So 26,960 days is not a whole lot. Why would you suffer? And the biggest complaint I get, by far, why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I suffer for so long when all I had to do was get my nervous system, digestive system, and nutrition straightened out? It's not hard. It's easy. So go to website, drjoesposito.com. Book your appointment today. Uh, you can call us if you have questions. We have certain guidelines uh, we, we, we like to follow, especially for the first visit. And we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. So we'd love to have that opportunity to see you, drjoesposito.com. So we're talking today about the food and romance. And I guess I got to jump ahead here. We got to talk a little bit more about digestion, then I'll give you some tips here. Uh, your stomach's job is to take proteins and break them into amino acids. Amino acids become neurotransmitters in your brain. The neurotransmitters control parts of your brain that control your hormones. So many times if you have a digestive problem, heartburn, acid reflux, burping, gas, bloating, you got to fix the digestive system to start creating the neurotransmitters to make the brain work better, to send the messages to your endocrine glands to start producing the hormones. Everything in, your, in, everything in your life is a big cycle in your body. If, if this tells this to do it, to tell this, to, it gives it feedback and tells it to do it. Yeah, it's a lot of studying to go on on how the body works. You don't have to know how it works. You have to know how to get it fixed. And so if you're having acid reflux, we may have to massage or pull your stomach away from the diaphragm to get it to relax so you can break your proteins down more efficiently. And the acid coming up into your throat can cause cancer. Wow, some pretty serious stuff there, isn't it? So just get it fixed, folks. Why are you suffering needlessly? I don't get it. I don't understand why people suffer for so long, and then they come to see us, and they go, wow, I should have done that sooner. Or they change their diet, or they start taking a, the minimum super greens and essential source every day, and go, wow, I should have done that sooner. You're right. You should have. So it's not just about the nervous system. As a chiropractor, of course, I always address the nervous system. We want to look at the digestive system, and we want to look at what you're eating. 
And then we can put together a treatment plan for you. We can put together a dietary plan for you. We can put together a supplement plan for you. We want to be your doctors. We really do. It doesn't matter where you live. We can do it now with technology. We can do it on the phone. We can Skype, whatever we need to do. All right, so a couple of tips here, especially when it comes to romance. We'll kind of wrap it up on romance. Uh, you got to have good circulation. So one of the things you can do is take some beets or beet powder. And I like beet powder better um, because uh, the sugar's taken out. Beets sometimes have a lot of sugar in them. So beet powder, and I mix it sometimes with maybe half a teaspoon with my super greens and my essential source, and swish it around in your mouth because the saliva has to activate the nitrates, and it becomes nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels. It's nature's, well, can't say a brand name, can I? Little blue pill. How about that? And it increases circulation to all parts of your body. So especially as we get older, we start to think, well, we don't function as romantically as we used to. Something like beet powder can be a big bonus. You want to stay away from high fructose corn syrup or really sugar in general, but fructose, high fructose corn syrup, agave, nectar, these are all in the same category because high fructose corn syrup or fructose has to be converted into glucose in order to be used by the body. When you produce glucose from fructose, you have a waste product called uric acid. Uric acid gets in your joints and it hurts. As a chiropractor, I know this because I treat a lot of pain. And so I'll tell patients, you got to change your diet along with your chiropractic care to help me get you better. So, and then uric acid prevents nitric oxide production, which prevents normal blood flow. So sugars, fructose, high fructose corn syrup, sodas, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, you just got to cut them out of your diet. It's just not a good thing. If you can handle it, I do recommend hot peppers or spicy foods. And the reason is spicy foods are vasodilators. They open up your blood vessels. And as we open up the blood vessels, it increases your circulation. And when you increase the circulation, the body's happy. All parts of the body, the brain, other parts, everything likes good circulation. And most of us have eaten a bad diet over the years and clogged up your arteries. And so we want to get the, arter the blood flow better by unclogging the arteries and increasing circulation. Things like ginger are wonderful anti-inflammatories. Ginkgo biloba is a supplement that you can take. And ginkgo biloba is a vasodilator. It opens up your blood vessels. So for brain function, open up the blood supply to your organs. Might be something you want to consider. Uh, sometimes short term. Sometimes you just got to get the body fixed up. You got to drink enough water. You wear 80, 90% water, depending on, I guess 80% is what this, a lot of studies say. And most of us are dehydrated. Most of us don't drink enough water. So here's my rule on, on, on drinking water. You should pee probably about once an hour if you're drinking a big glass of water every hour. And it should be clear. You should be able to read a newspaper through your urine. Now, don't try to read a newspaper through your urine, okay, because whoever you live with will think you're crazy and yell at me. But your urine should be clear. It shouldn't stink. It should come out pretty smoothly. And if there's issues, then we might want to find out. Is it a prostate that's clogged up? Is it a pinched nerve in the low back cutting off the nerve supply to the bladder? So you got to always go back to the nervous system. As a chiropractor, this, this is what blew me away. I was going to be a neurosurgeon originally. And when I started studying chiropractic, I was so blown away with the fact that you can unpinch a nerve, stimulate the nerve function, and what's ever on the other end of that nerve work better. Now, I respect the heck out of neurosurgeons. I think they're amazing doctors. However, I wanted to become a chiropractor because I thought I could have more fun with it and I could do more good. Now, neurosurgeons are great at serious problems. I wanted to help the masses. And so chiropractic really, everything I wanted in my life was right there. And then I started studying nutrition and biochemistry and neurophysiology. And all goes back to the three basic principles, a normally functioning nervous system, a normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. So nutrition, cut out the bad foods, eat the good foods, add Dr. Joe's super greens and Dr. Joe's essential source to your diet. Everybody should be taking that always. If you have acid reflux, go to my website, drjoesposito.com. I have a good article on GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Read that, and it'll explain to you real clearly what we do when we pull the stomach away from the diaphragm. And then, of course, chiropractic care is going to be the basis. I think everyone should get their spine checked. When I become whatever it is, Surgeon General or Grand Poobah of the Universe, I'm going, to rec I'm going to demand that everyone get their spine checked for misaligned vertebrae because there's a new study out that said that even the uh, uh, physicians— wait, 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 I got the study. I had it right here. Where are we? American College of Physicians— has updated its guidelines for non-invasive treatment of low back pain, and one of the things they recommend is chiropractic care. Before surgery, before injections, 
chiropractic care being one of the one of the recommendations. So folks, if you want to make an appointment to come see us, go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world, and we'll get you set up for an appointment. We accept most major medical insurances, car accidents, sports injuries, workers' comp. I've never seen a car accident where the car was damaged and the occupants weren't, ever. 32 years in practice now. And we accept most major medicals. Like I said, Medicare, we'd love to work with you. So go to website, drjoesposito.com. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge, and we will meet your health care needs. Uh, if you can't, can't spell it, just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world. Um, folks, if you have questions, send them to me through the website, drjoesposito.com. Talk to you next time. 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 Talk to you next time.